the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will lift up my voice with thanksgiving in my heart. I will lift up my voice with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Whoa, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, somehow, somehow, gotta make it on this journey somehow. Well, the devil's on my track. And he's trying to keep me back. Gotta make it on this journey somehow. 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 Gotta make it on this journey somehow. Well, the devil's on my track. And he's trying to keep me back. I gotta make it on this journey somehow. 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 Gotta make it on this journey somehow. Well, the devil's on my track and he's trying to keep me back. Gotta make it on this journey somehow, somehow, somehow. Gotta make it on this journey somehow. Well, the devil's on my track and he's trying to keep me back. I gotta make it on this journey somehow, somehow, somehow. Gotta make it on this journey somehow. Well, the devil's on my track and he's trying to keep me back. Well, the devil's on my track and he's trying to keep me back. Well, the devil's on my track and he's trying to keep me back. Gotta make it on this journey somehow. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What a difference a tambourine makes. Amen. We thank him. Praise God for being in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Finding us saved and sanctified and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and have no other mind but to see what the end is going to be. Amen. Somehow I'm going to make it. Somehow God is going to open up doors and open up ways. Somehow God is going to bless me that I might see him in peace. Praise God. Amen. We thank and praise the Lord for you who have turned aside for the City of David Church broadcast this morning. I'm Pastor Jones, and we thank God that you have turned aside to hear the word of the Lord this morning. And so before we really get started, get your Bibles and open up your uh Bible apps, amen, and let's get ready to hear what God has to say. We're going to John, the 21st chapter, and on the screen is going to say 1 through 23, and uh, I don't think we're going to read every one, but we're, that's where we're going this morning, and pray, pray, pray that uh -huh, our minds will be opened up today. 
We want to give thanks to those who support this ministry. Thank God for you, for all of your support in this ministry. We thank God that you have uh, allowed us uh, to be a part of your support financially and prayers. And though there may be some who would love to support this ministry, first of all, pray for us. Praise God that we will continue to do the will of God. And financially, it can be done through Cash App. You'll find us under the heading City of David Church Houston. And our Cash App ID is dollar sign COD Church Houston, the number seven. And so again, we thank God for you, you, and you. Now drop us a line. We would love to hear from you. We would love to pray for you and your situation. You can do so at COD Church, the number seven at gmail.com. Drop us a line and we would love uh, to put your name and your situation in our prayer box. And so for those of you who may uh, want just a little added touch, you can also go to our YouTube channel which under the same heading is City of David Church Houston. And we pray that there will be a message there that would help you along your way, that would lift you, that would continually to give you hope because that's what God's word is all about. God's word is all about deliverance. God's word is all about hoping in him. God's uh -huh, word is about a second chance in this corrupt life that he can give us Amen. If we'd only take heed to his word. And so, though, again, we thank God for all of you who have turned aside this morning as we go to the throne of grace. God, we thank you this morning and we bless your name. God, we come and we lift you up even right now. God, we ask that you look down on us. Every situation, every ailment, oh God. Oh, God, touch right now. Send peace and love this morning through your word. Oh, God, because you loved us and you proved it through the death of your son. You offered up your son as a sacrifice for us and you proved your love. And so, God, here we are today, God, because of your love and because of your kindness. God, we surrender all to you this morning. All that we have, it belongs to you. God, we lift our hearts up toward heaven this morning and saying, Lord, let your will be done in our lives. Now, God, we bind the works of the devil and every imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. We bind it now. Oh, we bind that mind. Loose it now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we pray that your word would go forth freely, that it would, oh God, touch hearts and minds, even right now across the land and across the seas. Destroy yokes, break, destroy the yokes right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we thank you and we bless your name, God, in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. We're going again to St. John chapter 21. We're gonna start at the first verse. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. Mm -hmm. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee and of the sons, I'm sorry, huh? Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, come on, somebody say morning. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answered him, no. 
And he said unto them, cast thy net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple uh -huh, whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he gird his fisher's coat unto him, and he was naked. He wasn't literally naked, but when you start getting into the how they dressed, he was naked. So he wasn't what we would call naked naked, but he didn't have on, that's something we can get into, didn't have on the proper attire to meet our Lord. Woo! That's a message in itself. And it says, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in, little, in a little ship for they were not far from land, but as it were 200 cubits, 300 feet, dragging the net with fishes. As soon, as soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes. Not these little, little tiny things. It said great fishes. Mm, look at what God has done. And hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many yet was not the net broken. Mm -hmm. Jesus saith unto them, come and dine. And none of the disciples do as ask him, who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth to them and fish likewise. And now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. And we will be going on further, but may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and to the hearers of his word. And so if you're like me, you caught all kind of glimpse of what Jesus was doing in the life of his disciples. My God, we're still in our faith series. And so those that are online, you see our topic for the day. Faith to reap, faith to reap. You gotta have faith. You get. You gotta have faith in this thing. You gotta. You gotta have faith to endure. You gotta have faith that uh huh that God is who He said He is. Yeah, you gotta have faith. And so as we go back to Hebrews, and that's where we where we got our jumping off point from. In this series, it says, uh, and now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. And so all we have to do is when we want to really, really find ourselves uh, um, with a good report unto the Lord, uh, we have to find ourselves in faith. It, it, it takes faith to walk this walk. It, it, it takes faith even for salvation. Well, how many of us uh, uh, sat uh, in the congregation one day and we, we heard the preached word and, and we rose up uh, from our seat that we would give our life to the Lord because the preacher was calling out the word of God and Jesus says, come unto me. Uh -huh. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And so here, if we want to get a good report, it's going to take faith. And, and this is not uh, the faith that mm, we just have on a certain day, but he told us to be thy faithful unto death. It causes us that uh -huh, when we start looking at uh, saying that we have faith, 
We need to examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith, Paul says. Examine our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I hear, I hear uh, the naysayers talking about, well, preacher, uh, nobody can be perfect. And preacher, nobody, in your flesh, that's the problem. We have a problem in the flesh. Uh -huh. But those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are, come on, the sons of God. Woo! My God, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. Oh, yeah, and I, I hear this other saying coming to mind. Well, preacher, God gave you five senses. That's where you've gone wrong. We've gone wrong by listening to us. Paul said, it's no longer I that live it, but it's the Christ that lives within me. He said, I count all that I have learned as what? Dumb. Because it doesn't mean nothing when it comes to serving God. Wow. So many times we have individuals that, are, that get hooked like a fish on the line, hook, line, and sinker, and never would go and read the word of God that you might know for yourself. We got folk talking about yeah, false prophets and da-da-da. Folk eat that up. Why? Because they're people, individuals, saints of God that have itching ears. And some ain't even saved, but they want to go and hear a word. I speak a word over my life, and you just as sinful as sin can be. But you want somebody to speak a word over your life, and you know you ain't living a nickel worth of nothing. That's not God. But the Bible declares all unrighteousness is sin. So it behooves us that we would live this life uh, by faith, that, that we would take God's word. And uh, we, we said the other day that the, the scripture tells us, uh, it was our convocation scripture, cast thy bread upon the water and it'll return not many days hence. Trust God and see won't God deliver. Hmm, hmm. But then we also go down to 11 and 6. In Hebrews, and it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him, continually seeks him. Yeah. What you do? I, I, I've been studying my word. I, I've been praying. Ring, ring. Hey, I called you today and you didn't answer. Well, if you called at five o'clock, you will not get me because that's my hour of prayer. That's my meditation time with God. Don't call me at five o'clock because when I enter into my home, I lay my myself down. Uh, I lay down all the burdens of the day and I give God glory. And I tell him that I thank you for me making it through another day. So we got to have faith. If we're going to do the will of God, it's going to take faith. It's not going to take your opinion. It's not going to take what you think you can analyze. But what it is is because the Bible declares that, uh, that the gospel is foolishness to the world. It don't make sense. It ain't supposed to make sense. Mm -hmm. This is only for those that, that, that are ready to surrender their lives. And once you surrender your lives, you go through and God can speak to you and you'll be what? Obedient to God's word. Faith to reap. Oh, yeah, we've got faith. We've got carnal faith. We have that all day long. Yeah. R.W. Schambach used to say, you know, the folk that go down to the casinos got faith. Pulling that one-armed bandit, or today, I'm sorry, uh, let me be politically correct. You push the button. You put your card in, push the button. Yeah. How you know, preacher? I used to live in Reno. Hello. Just so you'll know. So they have faith. Check this out. You got folk that will go down there and lose all their paycheck and then go back the next month. They got faith that they're going to hit the pot. Uh -huh. But they lost all they check. I've seen it where, 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 where mothers would go to the pawn shop pawning tools because their husbands lost all the money gambling. 
And all of a sudden, he's lost all the money. And so the wife has got to do whatever she needs to do that there might be food, that there might be electricity, that the rent might be paid, that they might make it through another week. And we got to watch out for naysayers and those that are really not within the kingdom of God. We got folk out there that talks against the kingdom of God. You got to ignore them and cut them off because they don't mean you no good. The Bible says if God be for us, he's more than the world that's against us. So here we find ourselves that in this passage of scripture, faith to read, read, read. We have to have the faith of God. How do we get the faith of God? By allowing Jesus Christ to come on board. Again, we said in our prayer, praise God, that God so loved the world. He loved us and he proved it. How did he prove it? It wasn't just words. No, he put his money where his mouth was and he offered up his son. Hello. And we complain about prayer. We complain about fasting. We complain about reading the word. We complain about going to church, serving God. And all of a sudden, God has offered up the ultimate gift to us, his son. And then we want to run around here talking about God got me. God got you and, and, and you, you're not subject to the word of God. James said, faith without works is dead. And you know anything dead need to be buried. woo -hoo. And so all of a sudden, God got me, but you ain't doing nothing. Show me your faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It going to take our faith to get the job done. And so we find out here in this faith, there's all kind of References to faith in the word of God. But when you go back to uh, Hebrews 11, you'll see those who had faith in God, who God calls them the heroes of faith. Now, I'm not going to go through the faith part. You already know it. If not, go study it. But this part I want to go through. So here, when we find ourselves looking at faith to reap, everybody wants to reap. Everybody wants to reap, and, 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 and it goes without saying, even God, woo, when he called out Israel, he said, look, I'm going to take you to a place. I'm going to give you houses you didn't build, uh, wells you didn't dig. So they were reaping, but what? They were reaping the benefits of God. What happened when they uh, start to be disobedient? God began to cause their enemies to come against them, and they were cut off. And then God called called to them that they would repent and come back unto the Lord. Mm. We got to realize that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That God is not changing, but it's we who are changing. And we expect the word of God to change with us, but the word of God is not going to change. Look, he said that a, not, a one dot or tittle of the word shall not pass until this world pass away and so we're still here another day and the word of God is not passing away we're still in the now and so the word of God still stands true today now we're going to get at the end and so I hope you hold on we're going to get to the end because a lot of times we wondering why is things going the way that it's going Keep that in your memory brains. We're wondering why things are going the way that they are going. But here, in order to have faith to reap, there are some things that have to go forth. And so, first of all, we've already covered faith, but what is it to reap? It says summer and harvest. You know how it is. Solomon talked about the ant. You said, uh, uh, look at the ant, you sluggard. Yeah, you lazy person. What does the ant do? The ant works all summer long that it might have sustenance through the winter, that it might sustain itself. But how about us? Having faith to reap causes us to have faith. It, 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 it 
it's more than just saying, I have faith. Because what happens is when you don't apply works with your faith, you make God into a liar. Woo! Yeah. Because if faith without works is dead and Abraham uh, took his only son that represents the faith of God, but he had works, but you ain't doing nothing. And folks see our lives, they say, well, is that what God requires? But what happens is we, we, we actually try to make God a liar. I ain't got to do nothing. That's their job. I don't have to do nothing. I don't got to do I don't have to share the gospel. That's their job. Really? I believe that it's all of our jobs that we might share the gospel. So here, when you talk about reaping, it says the practice of harvesting grain. A sickle with a short handle or a curve. So it talks about those things that they used to do that when they were reaping, the tools that they used. But here it says a, super, a supervisor organized the reapers. Go to Ruth 2 and 5, and you can read it. Who were often hired for daily wages. You'll find that in Deuteronomy 24 and 15. And you'll also find it in Matthew 20, 1 through 16. And provide it with food. You'll find it in Job 24 and 11. The workers were followed by the poor and the foreigners, such as Ruth, to gather the, lo gather the leftover grain from the harvest. You'll find that in Deuteronomy 24 and 19. So you'll find that reaping is not something unusual, that uh, it's a common practice that uh, individuals will reap. And so when you plant a harvest, you go out to reap the harvest. You know, Jesus also said that the harvest truly is white. It's ready. He says, but the laborers are few. He's saying that now is the time to go out and do my work. Now is the time to, to work for the kingdom of God. He said, because it's already white. It's already been prepared. Now go out and labor. It's not just for the pastor to go labor. It's not just for the deacon to, be, to labor. It's for everybody who names the name of Christ to labor in the vineyard of the Lord. Whether you're in the grocery store and you share a track, whether you're on the job and you share a word, hello, in your neighborhood, you, you minister to uh, one of your neighbors. And so it is a responsibility uh -huh, to every believer that we minister the word of God so that we might reap, come on, that God may reap, yeah the benefits. So here, when we look at it, we have to get an understanding. In 1 Corinthians 9 and 11, we reference to the right of the, the uh, leader, the apostle, and his fellow missionaries to receive material assistance from the church, a right which he before before be born, be born, I'm sorry, to exercise. So it behooves us that we would, you know how, how it is, folks, you know, a lot of folks gonna go, oh, let me say this. The Bible says in Malachi, to bring ye all the tithes, let me be correct. Uh -huh. Bring the tithes into the storehouse. Well, we ain't, we ain't got storehouses. We ain't, no, we don't deal in cows and don't bring no goat up to the city of David. We can't use no goat. Yeah, we don't, uh, fruits and vegetables. No, 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 That's we don't do that. <laughs> but what we do do is that we use finance like they did in days of old when they went up to offer up their sacrifice. They used their money to go down and purchase that animal that they might make the sacrifice unto God. And so here, Paul says in 9-11 that we are worthy to reap your carnal things. 
Today, it takes money to pay for the electricity. Hello. But we miss the point. We, 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 we miss it at best because we don't realize that when we don't pay our tithes, not giving an offering, we miss, we miss our blessing. We miss it because he said, won't I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive? But still, we hold back and we still sing that same own song. He got me. In 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, it says, uh -huh, with reference to rendering material help to the needy, either sparingly or bountifully, the reaping being uh, proportionate to the sowing. So it behooves us that we would sow into our church, the place where we go and worship, the place where that has been hollowed out, that you might go and uh, pray, that you might go and uh, 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 hear the word of God, that that place, that organization, that build, that church, that you might disperse out for the needy. In Galatians 6, 7, and 8, and then 9, it says, of reaping corruption with special reference according to the context to which is naturally short-lived. Transit through the statement applies to every form of sowing to the flesh. You know how it is. We sow to the flesh these carnal things, but when it comes to the spiritual things, we can't find, I can't find nobody. I can't find, can't find nobody. And, and, and it's not just, the, it's not just the, 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 the money. It's about what do you sow to your own soul? Do you spend time in the word that when God, he said that the comforter shall lead you and guide you. But, but the Bible says uh, that God has spoke to us in times past and sundry times, but he's speaking to us now through Jesus Christ. You don't know what Christ is saying. You don't know you don't know whether it's God's word or not. You just every time somebody speaks something and they say it, thus said the Lord, you eat it up and you run to it. But you don't know whether it's God or not. And let's not talk about not having the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you. It will direct you. That's why Jesus sent it. Well, brother preacher, uh, 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 my pastor said it don't exist. Well, he a lie and wonder. And the truth ain't in him. The Bible declares, I believe it's over in 2 and 38, as many as the Lord thy God shall call. And God is still calling individuals to salvation. He's still calling individuals that they might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. My God, I, I don't hear nobody now. Praise God. That's the truth in God's word. But here we walk around and we march around like we got it going on. And we'll believe the man, but we won't believe God's word. And all of a sudden you'll say, he got me. Really? He got you where? And he who? Because the devil got you right where he wants you. You're disobedient. You're unruly, unthankful. My God. I don't know why I'm going there, but th th that's the truth of God's word. We sow to the flesh before we sow to God. We can't get a prayer through. Why? Because we don't spend time with God. I'm just praying. When you pray, you pray on your way to work. Jesus said, when you pray, enter into your what? Your closet. Hmm. So here he talks about reaping to the flesh and sowing to the flesh. It says, as a result of sowing to the spirit, the reference undoubtedly being to the new nature of the believer, which is, however, under the controlling power of the Holy Ghost. 
the reaping, the effect of well-doing being accomplished to a limited extent in this life, but in complete fulfillment at and beyond the judgment seat of Christ. Diligent and lexity here will be produced impartial mm -hmm. results. And here I put in quotation, God is no respecter of persons. So what this is literally saying is that as I reap the benefits of God and I sow to the spirit, praise God, amen, when it's judgment time and I stand before the judgment seat of Christ, uh, there will be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He'll say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We have to reap to the spirit and stop reaping to the flesh. We, we, we got more clothes than we got prayer time. Mm hmm more shoes than we got prayer time. Mm -hmm. We spend more on ourselves than we do in God's work. Well, preacher, you, you mean to tell me we can't have good things? You can have good things. But the word of God is coming to us that we don't miss heaven because the Bible declares that the righteous shall scarcely make it in. Man, we ain't just going to be walking up there. We, we, gotta, we got to govern ourselves in what we do day to day. We have to look at our life. And the Paul says to examine ourselves whether we be in the faith. We don't examine ourselves. We just say, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. And just as off as two left shoes. All you have to do is go on Facebook. Folk trying to quote something in an opinion, but it ain't the word of God. Baby, give me the word of God, amen, that I can count on, that I can stand on. I want the assurance of God in my life. I don't. Uh, that's where I went wrong in my life because I was listening to folk, listening to people who had their own opinion. And that's the problem. We want to have our own opinion. We want to have, we want to do it our way instead of doing it God's way. My Lord, thank you, Jesus. Here in Revelations, in Revelations 4 and 15, it says, figuratively, of the discriminating judgment divinely to be fulfilled at the close of this age. That's what I just quoted a few minutes ago about the judgment seat of Christ. When the wheat, here it is, I was trying to get to this, I don't want to get to this, but, but here it is. It says, when the wheat shall be separated from the tares. Now, I'm not going to comment on that, but I'm going to say that for last. Here, when we look at Jesus in this uh, recollection of this event, we find that Jesus cares about his disciples. Here, though we see that he was uh, he died and he had risen, but he showed himself. But look, you have to look clearly to see what is really going on. Jesus commanded them and told them to go and preach the gospel. And then Peter says, I go a fishing. So many times we, 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 we find ourselves doing our own thing when God says go. We find ourselves, amen, in places we should not be. But Jesus said, go. All of a sudden, Jesus um, revealed to him, all you got to do is go back and read the word. He sent out 70 individuals that they might go and preach. But the Bible says he breathed on them and the Holy Ghost was upon them and they went out and preached. But wait a minute. It was more than just that. They, they were provided for. He said, don't take a script. Don't take a purse. Don't take a staff. Don't take an extra coat. I'm going to show you my power. All you have to do is have faith in me and you will see the ultimate power that I have and the love that I have for you. And they came back rejoicing and they came back giving God glory. But then all of a sudden. At the end, 
Jesus died, they go fishing. We're always in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing. We should hone in because Jesus said, if I, we want to be like Jesus, you know, to be like Jesus, be like Jesus. Oh, how I want to be like him. He says, I come to do the will of him that sent me. Now he's called us out of darkness into this marvelous light and we can shout the victory and we can praise God, but he called us to do a work. Jesus said it this way because, you know, I hear so many folks talking about he got me, but, 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 but I don't see the works. Jesus said this to the Pharisees because th they were small minded and they were reaping to their flesh and not the spirit. As we just said, Jesus said, if you don't believe my word, look at my works. <laughs> Jesus said, because God has sent me and, and praise God. I was in the beginning. I was the word and I got faith in God. But if you can't believe my faith, check out my works. Sometimes we can't we can't see uh, the works of nobody. We just sit around doing nothing. We don't have uh, the intestinal fortitude to get up and do something for God. We more about our business than God business. We sit at home and we got it going on, and we sit at home and praise God, Amen. Don't want to do the work of God. But we'll do our work. We'll get up early in the morning. We'll work late at night doing our work. But then all of a sudden, we'll tell God, God, I need. And he said, wait a minute, hold it. It's called reciprocity. We want to get from God, but we don't give nothing back. That sounds like a one-sided relationship. Who wants to be in a one-sided relationship well, you know, some do, where they always getting, but never give. And then when they give, they have unjust balances. Woo, I thank you, Lord. The Bible talks about an unjust balance. God gives this, and then you get way down here, and you go, oh, there you go, God. Let, let's, let's make it equal. Hello? God saved you and delivered you from alcohol. God delivered you from smoking and drugs. God just delivered you from sin. And all of a sudden, here it is, God. I give you this. The Bible says if you reap sparingly, you should all, you, if you give sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. <coughs> and then if you give bountifully, you should reap bountifully. We don't understand the concept of God. God has a plan. Now we'll go on YouTube and we hear it and we'll hear everybody's secret. I got a secret. I got a secret for success. I got a secret. I got everything is a secret. I'm so tired of hearing folks talking about it's a secret. <laughs> don't nobody know it but them. It's a, it's a secret. It's a secret. Nobody know. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. Everybody got a secret. So here we find that they went fishing when they should have been out plotting and planning their, their, their next assault on a city to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. So Jesus just calmly says, children, have you any meat? <laughs> Jesus is smooth with it. Uh-huh. He asked them, do you have any meat? Uh-huh. And then he, then they said, no. Now, check it out. This is faith to reap. First of all, Jesus says, okay, we're going to see if you really got faith to reap. We've been fishing all night long, doing it our way, and ain't got nowhere. Hello. We've been doing it our way and haven't got nowhere. But then Jesus says, Cast your net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Yeah. Faith to reap says, okay, Jesus, I know you know better than me. Yeah. 
And so because I know you know better than me, I'm going to follow the plan. Because the plan is going to bring me a, a great reward than me up all night long, all day long, waiting to reap when all we have to do is allow the master to speak a word into our lives. Oh, yeah, I know you want to do it your way, but your way is not the right way. He said, casting all your cares upon him, for he what? Careth for you. Seek the Lord why he may be found. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And so they did. They cast their nets on the right side. And the Bible declares they had, what was it, 153 fish. They must have counted. But check it out. When God does something, I was watching, uh, I was watching the other day because uh, uh, I like fishing. And so I was watching these guys in India, how they were fishing. And as they were beginning to fish, they had some sticks on each end of a net. And then they had another pole that went in the center of the, of the poles that was going down to the net. So it was kind of like this. And so all of a sudden, they would, and, and, and a strange fishing. I thought, yeah. And so they dipped it in the water and they came up. And they came up with little tiny fish. I said, that's a waste of time. I mean, you can't figure this out. You got the net. I would just take the net and stretch it across and then wait for a while and drag it in to see what I get. But they were standing there waiting for little tiny fish. But here Jesus said, if you do what I tell you to do, you shall reap a harvest that you can't provide for yourself. My God from heaven. And so the Bible declares that they took in great fish. They took in 153, but they were great fish. It means that they were not little tiny fish that you can't feed your family. It means that they were, okay, Sister Joan, they were at least half arm's length, right? About like this, yeah. We'll just say that. And so they were great fish. You know, we go fishing, I go fishing with my son, and we catch the little ones, and Benjamin said, used to say, Daddy, can't we keep it? Can't we keep it? I right, Benjamin, no, we can't keep it. That's too small, man. We can't, we can't even eat that. But Daddy, can't we get a bunch? No, th 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 I'm going to throw it back, son. And so we would wait until we got something large enough to eat. And so when we, when we cast out, we catch something large, we'll keep it. So we find here and we look at, at Jesus, how Jesus provide, and they, they brought up some great fish. Mind you, check it out. Listen to what the, the word of God is saying. And they were able to bring the fish in and what? The nets didn't break. God has a way of sustaining us. God has a way of keeping us, keeping us together and keeping our minds and keeping our hearts. If we would only allow God woo, to come into our lives and sustain us, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on him. The nets didn't break. The, 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 they were able to bring in their catch. And so I want to say that with God, he's a sure thing. With, with Jesus, he's a sure thing. And with the Holy Ghost, he's a sure thing. And he won't fail us and he won't let us down. Praise God. He's there for us, but we have to have the faith of God. Amen. The belief in God that God, I'm going with you all the way. <laughs> Praise God. And so as they pulled in, they dined. They were able to dine on the blessing that Jesus had provided for them. Come on now, remember, God is not a respecter of person. He's the same yesterday, today, and evermore. God does want to bless us, but mind you, dear hearts, we have to look at the full spectrum. That's why Jesus said, search the scriptures. In them, you think you have a, excuse me, eternal life. You have to look at what God is saying. 
We just go off and just, oh, I, you heard one word from the preacher, but you have to go and read. Because there, uh, uh, T.D. Jakes was mentioning one time, he said, you read the paper. He said, but you got to go and read the backstory. You got to go and really see what's going on. And what I'm alluding to is that you have to realize that it's not just naming and claiming. It's about, I'm going to, what did he say? If you abide in me and I will Abide in you. You can ask whatsoever you will. So we go around here talking about, oh, I'm naming it, girl. I'm, I'm claiming it, man. No. He says, if I abide, come on, it, it goes like this. If I could live in you and if you could live in me, you could ask what you will. I want to live in you and I want to reside in you, not just on Sunday and not just on Wednesday. I'm talking about 24-7 because he did say, once again, be thy faithful unto death. Carry me everywhere you go. I want to be with you. Faith to reap. Mm. Time is winding up. Faith to reap. So here, Jesus asked the question. Now, they've already sat there and they've already dined, but, but Jesus wants to know. And, and, you know, inquiring minds really want to know. I want to know. The Bible tells us to give every man a reasonable answer for the hope that lies within us. What's the answer? What's your hope? Mm -hmm. Jesus says in verse 15, he says, so when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Bajona, lovest thou me more than thee? Do you love God? You know, we, we hear it all the time. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's simple. It's not really easy to do, but why? It takes discipline. We want God to do it all. It takes discipline. It takes us reading the word. It takes us listening to the Holy Ghost as he leads us. It takes us being obedient to the word. What did the word say? Let not filthy communication come out of your mouth. What did the word say? Follow peace with all men, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. What did the word of God say? And we walk around like we just, God just owes us, but he owes us nothing. We owe God and it behooves us that we would follow after the word of God that we might reap, praise God, the benefits of God. Mm -hmm. And he saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my lambs. We're always quick to talk about, oh yeah, I love God. Where's the work at? Yeah, leaders want to see the followers working. He's preaching day after day to the flock and he's saying, I want to see your works because there's going to come a time. Matter of fact, the, the 10 versions, there's going to come a knock at the door, baby. And, and if you're not ready, you're going to try to go and get what you need, but it's just going to be too late. Five wise and five foolish. Then he says, feed my lambs. He said unto him a second time, son of by Jonah, lovest thou me? He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. Now, if Jesus knew, help me out, help me out. If Jesus knew that he loved him, why did Jesus have to keep asking him? Because he already proved what he was going to do. I'm going fishing. Well, I, I, I'm, I called you to be what? Way up in John, way up in Matthew. I called you to be what? Fishers of men. Hmm. As you become fishers of men, he said, I'll provide the way. Hello. He's trying to get them to see that, that I'm going to provide the way for you. Mm. He said to him a third time, Simon Barjona, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. 
Oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Hey, how about see? Hey, hey, hey. I love the Lord, but you ain't working. Not talking about in the kitchen. There's one young lady here in Houston. I admire her. What's her name, honey? She have a, she uh, started her own little uh, ministry for women. She's teaching women over uh, Facebook. What's her name? Uh, Corey, C Curry. What's her name now? Lisa, Lisa Curry or Lisa Davis now. But it's, I remember as Curry. And you can click on there and she's just teaching the women and teaching them how to live holy. I admire that of her because uh, she not just sitting around doing nothing. She says, if God is in me, let me bring forth the word of God to women, hurting women and struggling women. And now that women just need encouragement. Praise God. And I admire that. That says a lot about her and her love for Christ. Jesus says, come on, man, if you love me, get to work. We want to be sharp on Sunday. We want to be sharp as a tack. We want to be cool on Sunday. It ain't doing nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou, here it is, this is what I was trying to get. I hope I can bring it out. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was, was young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whether thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands and another shall guide thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest go. This spake he signifying by his death, by, by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, saith unto him, follow me. Peter turning about, seeing the disciples whom Jesus loved following which also, excuse me, leaned on his breast at supper and saith, Lord, which, I like this, here it comes, which is he that betray thee? Peter seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, did I say it? Lord, and what shall be, what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, if I will that he tarry, Till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. I'm stopping right there. I wrote a little note, so y'all don't mind if I go there. Let me see, what did I write? What did I write? I call this section, and I love this, God dropped this in my spirit. I call this the mind your own business section we have a tendency to talk about well what so-and-so is doing and what so-and-so is doing look at here what jesus is saying he said never know mind about who's gonna betray me don't you worry about that i've got bigger things in store that i need taken care of you got your mind troubled on one thing, but I want you to realize, don't worry about it. You got to mind your own business. Jesus says, what is it if I let him tarry till I come? Our minds is on all kind of other stuff, but not on the minds of God. Girl, did you hear? Man, did you hear thus and so and thus and so? It ain't all about that. Because we focus more on what somebody else is doing than what God has commanded us and charged us to do. I love this, boy. When I read that, I was like, wow. It doesn't matter what folk do. We have to remember that God has called us for a purpose. He's charged us that we might spread the gospel in our neighborhoods, in our families, on our jobs. That's what we should be concentrating on. And then if somebody has failed, uh, it, it's up to us to pray. We, 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 we are discombobulated about our local church. Pray. If you got the Holy Ghost, pray. 
We complain and mur pray. Let's see, out of all the prayer time you spend with God, let's see the move of God on the lives of those you're praying for. Stop complaining. Pray. Ask God to move. Ask God that there might be, thank you, Lord, a great shakedown come about. Let God do some shaking and let God do it, but pray about it. Stop complaining and focus on the things that you need to focus on because what happens is it becomes a distraction in our lives. We're so easily distracted. We're distracted by family members. We're, distra we're distracted by all kinds of stuff and we lose focus on what God is calling us to do. How is that that we lose focus? Because we really don't want to do the will of God. We'd rather eat garbage than to eat the unadulterated word of God. We'd rather, we'd rather lie down in the hog pen than, than to do what God has called us to do. And mind you, it behooves us that we would, we would uh, be obedient in our homes, on our jobs, in our neighborhoods. Faith to reap. Mm -hmm. Faith. Faith to reap the blessings of God. Aren't you tired of faking it? Aren't you tired of just going around? Because re remember, again, this is in the word of God. Jesus fasting, the devil take him on the, the pinnacle of the church. And the devil offers him what? Worldly stuff. That's all the devil has was worldly stuff. And, and he's the prince of the air. So, baby, when you start seeking these worldly things and that's all on your mind, the Lord help you. What did the devil say? I'll give you power over the kingdom. Ain't that what we what the, the, Jesus said in one passage of the scripture? That's what the Gentiles seek after. So we seeking power on our jobs. Yeah, we seek in power. I've have got to have control over you. We're seeking power, but we're not seeking the will of God. What else did he say? Oh, now that you're fasting, I'm going to offer you this great food. Yeah, he tempts you. Yeah, and he's still tempting. And some has failed for it because all you got to do is go on YouTube. All you got to do is go on Facebook. All you got to do is go on uh, 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 Instagram and whatever else there is. Folk have the colossal nerve talking about God first and you showing all your goodies on, 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 on social media. And you think God is pleased with that? We're supposed to dress modestly. And all of a sudden, they just talking about how good God is. And you got your see-through on and you got the, your, your un, un, uns on. And, and, and this is just crazy. And we say we're doing the work of God. Somebody lying. It behooves us that we would reap the benefits and the blessings of God. Yeah. It behooves us because, uh, uh, dear heart, you're not that important. Jesus said, if you don't praise me, the rock's going to. You better give honor to God while you still can. Now is the time that you would fall on your knees and say, God, forgive me for my arrogancy. God, forgive me for disdaining you. Forgive me, oh God, for being ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm sorry. Forgive me and wipe the slate clean. Give me another chance. But we walk around like we just got it going on like that. And we don't. Faith to reap. I want to reap the blessings of God in my life. I want God's best in my life. I want the peace and the love of God. Man can't even give it. He says, I love you and slap you in the back or slap you in your face and stab you in the back. Man says, I care for you and care nothing about you, but just up in your face. But she says she loved me. <laughs> Woohoo. Yo, okie doke. He said he loved. No, I gave him my heart, and I gave I gave her all that I okie doke. Because if they don't love God, woo, 
whom they have not seen, how can they love me or you who they see every day, but have the love of God in their heart? I've got the love of God. Really? There's something strange going on. Faith to reap. I've got the, I want the faith to reap. Faith to endure. Faith to continue on until the end. Some, the saints have to take the low road at times because of what? Because of the faith in God that they have. So today, dear hearts, we thank God for you and hope that we said something to encourage you. Today is a good day, backslider. Today is a good day. Today is a good day that you would accept this word again in your life, that you would commit your life and say, you know what? I'm tired of living the way I'm living. And I know God has better. It's time that you come back. Come back and let God straighten out the crooked things. Because he said the crooked things shall be made straight. Every valley shall be filled. The things in your life that, that you think you're missing, God will fulfill it and he'll fulfill that void in your life. That's what we're missing in life. That's why we go chasing after drugs and, and flesh and, and alcohol and flesh. And we do it because we're trying to fill that void. But I want to let you know, dear heart, when you allow God to come into your life and you allow him to feel, fulfill that void in your life, woo, you are happy, peaceful, knowing that God loves you. And he's not an Indian giver either. And he won't stab you in the back. You may not be saved. And I want to give you this invitation to get saved. You need to know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. You need to come to know Jesus Christ. Because dear hearts, as we read earlier in Revelations, when Jesus comes back, he's going to judge. Right now we're in grace and truth. And he says, I'm going to give you time to repent. He told that to Israel. He said, I gave you time to repent, but you didn't repent. We have this awesome time to repent of all of our sins, to come to God, to know him. Yeah. He said that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So today is a good day. If you're a backslider, today is a good day to come back. If you don't know the Lord, come on, some of you have been faking. I know the Lord. Some of y'all been talking about, I've been baptized, and you still living like the devil. You still fussing and cussing. That, that, that to me would say an indication that baptism mm, don't save the soul. Hello. God wants to, the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Huh? Hey, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And so he comes to transform us. He comes to destroy the yoke. He comes that he might deliver that old monkey on our back. Just like that, the heroin addict or the crack addict, they kept going back. They would do whatever it takes to get that hit. Well, God is the deliverer. You don't need to get that hit today. You just need Jesus. Allow Jesus to come into your life and he will save you and he will deliver you from all of your sins and will cause you to live. He said, what? Be ye holy for I am holy. Nobody can be holy. Well, mm, uh, with man, scripture says, uh, with man, it is impossible, but there is nothing impossible for God. When you get away from your own stinking thinking and allow God to come into your life, God can do a work in you that the psychologist can't do, that AA can't do. Hello. But you have to allow him to come in and you have to allow him to do the work. So again, we hope that we said something to encourage your hearts today. I'm Pastor Jones from the City of David Church here in Houston, Texas. We thank God that you have turned aside, that you might be blessed by the word of God. And so until Wednesday night at 730, we'll see you again. And our prayer is that God's best would ever be yours. God bless you.